good morning to everyone. Um, like Prof rightly said, I'm Abdul Razak Al Hassan, Communication Director of Small Scale Miners in Ghana. Um, Prof Chair, before I go on on my presentation, I think uh, yesterday one of the panelists, uh, Mr. Abdul Momin, uh, I think of GBC, was saying that we are not visible. We, the Small Scale Mining Association, are not visible in the country, so they can't hear from us. Um, we cannot be visible when <laughs> the government tied our hands behind us, whilst the media kept plasters on our mouth. How do we be become visible? Because when you look at 2017, for instance, uh, the government put a ban on a blanket ban on small-scale mining, whether legal or illegal. They kept a, a blanket ban, and there was this media coalition against Galamse, who were also pushing an agenda. At that period, we those who were speaking for this association, anytime you move to a media house, even to buy airtime they will tell you that they don't want trouble. So people see us to be uh, distractors, and people see us to be, even some family members don't want to even listen to us when we were speaking. And this same government were the people who we went into contract with, and they gave us licenses to mine. But they put a blanket ban, and nobody was speaking in our favor. I think uh, Dr. Engineer Ashibe, if he's around, he was one of the advocates who was leading this campaign until he started visiting the various mining districts. Then his narrative changed. So sometimes Ghana, we, we come into issues, we don't research for, 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 for the right end, then we start blaming people. So today, I think I will go straight to the presentation so that our women would understand that we are all over the country. Um, Ghana National Small Scale Miners Association is the umbrella association of registered small scale miners as stipulated in our mining laws. The association was formed in 2011 and its formation was facilitated by the Minerals Commission under the Minerals and Mining Act 206, Act 703, subsection 90E. We operate in all the 13 mining districts as demarcated by the Minerals Commission, and we enhance the organization and coordination of small-scale mining in order to maintain effective regulation of operators in the subsector. The association has been a major collaborator with the Minerals Commission and the Lands and Natural Resources Ministry at large, being the forefront of social mobilization efforts to, towards the improvement of mining practices. Also, relative to capacity building of its members on prudent and judicious exploitation of minerals resources through sustainable mining, minerals processing methods, and environmental management for sustainable development. We have a mission, and our mission is to promote effective, efficient, and responsible artisanal small-scale mining for sustainable development. And our vision is to become the leading organization for responsibly artisanal and small-scale mining and the hub for promoting responsible artisanal and small-scale mining in Ghana and Africa as a whole. Our objective is to protect the right, interest, and welfare of miners, fight against environmental degradation and illegal mining, women empowerment and livelihood at mining sites and the communities at large, Eliminate child labor in small scale mining and the entire supply chain. Building centers for research and development and vocational training that creates local capacity, innovate local technological, financial, and social solutions for artisanal small scale mining. Providing policy advice and recommendations to government and organizations locally and internationally. To promote the regularization and licensing for small scale miners to reduce the use of mercury in recovery gold and hence reducing mercury pollution to the environment. We have our membership 
the membership of the association shall be in accordance to Act 703, Section 83, Subsection A, B, and C of the Minerals and Mining Act. Any other association, cooperatives, or any group which wants to join the national association shall first join the local district branch within which they domicile before they shall be considered as members of the association. Our membership are affiliated. The affiliation could be individuals or companies in plant pools, tailings, calling, and manage, or management, all processes, mine support services for small-scale mines, and any other related services to the small-scale mine. We have our structures so that people will understand the structures that we have. So all the 13 mining districts, we have the functional executive, which is the FEC, National Executive Committee, which is the NEC. We have our mining district executive committees so that every mining district that you go, you will find our members there. Zonal executives and then the community executives. That is why we said we can police our own selves because we are all over the mining districts. We are in partnership with University of Energy and Natural Resources, University of Mines and Technology, International Labor Organization, International Institute of Environment, Environmental Development, Solidarity West Africa, Australian Government Aid, Ghana Landscape Restoration and Small Scale Mining Project, and then Third World Net Africa. Benefits of artisanal small scale mining to Ghana's economy. We have the linkages. We have forest earnings that the country earn through small scale mining. We have major employment in our sector, pay taxes to the nation, boost economic activities in rural areas, create wealth, reduces migration to urban areas, provide pathfinders clue of large deposits. In all this, we have our own challenges in the subsector. Lack of funds, inadequate geological data for artisanal small-scale mining, inadequate logistic, cultural resource and personnel for MDAs, weak implementation and enforcement of defined policies and laws, interference by politically exposed people. We have inadequate land for small-scale miners so that we can do our activities responsibly. Signing of land leases, delayed by the Sector Minister of Minerals, uh, Ministry of Lands and Natural Resources. Because the minister was here, he was praising the, lands, uh, the Minerals Commission. Yes, they've improved their activities all right, but when the ball lies to his office. Now we have 4,000 land leases lying down there. It has not been signed. Why can we stop, or how are we going to stop illegal mining? Illegal mining, water pollution, land degradation, misapplication of harmful chemicals, land use conflict, ETC. Goal for oil policy implementation challenges. That goal for oil in, uh, this is policy that government brought, there was no any consultation. They brought it on us. And how is it going to work? These are some of the challenges that we have. Measures in addressing illegal mining minutes. In our own way, we see self-policing policy as one direction that we must go because we have our task force and a monitoring team and we've been following government or other agencies to even have a, have a listening ear to us so that we can police ourselves but always people have their own agenda and it's very difficult. Our task force, for instance, we have to follow government for a very long time before they agreed to even give us a uh, brim in the eastern region. Anybody can testify if today you go to Chebi, the water company were complaining that they can't even pump water for the past three months or something like that. Within two weeks, they were able to pump the water, and our task force are still operating. Anybody who wants proof of that, can go and testify. Anytime we bring ideas as re uh, regulations or industry players, government will twist it to their own lie. Because 
uh, this task force issue, they will try to sabotage the whole thing. If it got to a time that national security have to come and arrest our boys because we are not giving them way to extort money from uh, these illegal miners. They arrested our boys, placed them in custody for almost two weeks. When we did the follow-up, they were not able to tell us the exact uh, offense the boys committed. What they said was that they heard that they were going around wearing military uniform and they were extorting money. Where is the proof? Nobody could prove to us that this is the money they went and extorted. Just to distract us so that they can have their own way. All of us here, we can dance around the problem. But the truth must be told to authorities. Because we come out here always lambast with the small scale miners. We know the problems, we know who, those who are behind it. As we speak, there are, no, there are media, some media men or people who are into Galamse. There are some military men who are into Galamse. We know people who even resigned from military because they entered into Galamse, got money, and they've resigned from the military uh, operations. We have politicians who are always lambasting us because they get the medium, they get the platform to speak. Because we cannot uh, uh, get that uh, medium to speak. They will go there, sit down, lie to the whole country, thinking that they are harming Razak. It is all of us who are into this crisis together. And we need to be truthful to ourselves. Small scale mining is not something which is illegal. But always they frame us. We are all at fault here. Because there are so many acad listen, uh, academicians who always say that, oh, they've polluted our waters with chemicals and whatnot. What is the scientific proof? Which scientists, all the scientists that we have in this country, are we saying that the muddy waters that we are seeing, I'm not projecting it, but are we saying that the muddy water we are seeing are, are all polluted with chemicals? There are farmers who are using poisonous chemicals. There are fishermen who are using poisonous chemicals. There are large-scale companies. Obosi or golfers go to their area where they place their tailings. You go and see their water very clean. If you, don't see, if you see it, you will see it's a pipe bone water. But it's, a, it's full of chemicals, which they themselves have warned the communities not to take that water. But when we project them, we will go and fetch waters from the streams or the rivers, come and show it to the whole world, and then they will be lambasting us. So the problem, we should stop dancing around the problem. We should see how best we can solve the problem once and for all. And by solving it, let the industry players be the forefront. Because any time it looks as if that, because we have not been to school, people are thinking for us. And that thing must stop. You cannot be thinking for me whilst you are not, in, uh, you are not part of me. You, I cannot come and show a media person how to hold his mic. Meanwhile, I'm not working there. So anytime we organize forums, we organize, we'll bring intellectuals and whatever, and leave we the miners behind. So at the end of the day, what are we doing to ourselves? Then we need to identif identification of illegal miners and addressing challenges when there's regard them through the process to be formalized. Collaboration with stakeholders, especially traditional leaders and academia, to ensure that time out, uh, mine outlands are duly uh, reclaimed. In conclusion, NASA will continue to collaborate with stakeholders to work to, towards the formalization of the artisanal small scale mining sector through its self regulation policy. We will still continue forging ahead, working for it. The activities of NASIM and um, artisanal small-scale mining stakeholders will help streamline the sector to contribute towards social, economic, and environmental improvement at mining communities and the com economy as a whole. Thank you very much. Okay.